Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very fascinating topic, the double vision diplopia, the clinical approach. So the approach to double vision diplopia. Cranial nerves part 28, oclomotor nerves part 14. When the patient complains of diplopia, the first step should be to determine whether the diplopia is binocular or uniocular. So when the patient complains of diplopia, the first step should be to determine whether the diplopia is binocular or monoocular. So how will you say whether it's monoocular or binocular diplopia? Monoocular diplopia persists when using the affected eye alone. It is usually due to ophthalmologic conditions. Whereas binocular diplopia covering one eye eliminates the visual confusion. So in binocular diplopia covering one eye eliminates the visual confusion and double vision. So this is the way we differentiate whether it's uni, whether it's monocular diplopia or binocular diplopia. The pertinent observations of diplopia include whether the diplopia is horizontal or vertical, worse at near or distance or worse in a particular direction of gaze. Horizontal diplopia usually results from dysfunction of the medial rectus or lateral rectus. So horizontal diplopia that is double vision in the horizontal plane is because of the muscles which move the eyes in a horizontal plane that is either the lateral rectus or medial rectus. So if medial rectus or lateral rectus gets affected there will be diplopia in horizontal direction. So it is known as horizontal diplopia. The lateral rectus is responsible for abduction, medial responsible medial rectus is responsible for adduction. So if lateral rectus gets affected, abduction gets affected, patients complains diplopia of looking at far off objects. If adduction that is medial rectus gets affected, they will have diplopia at looking at near objects. So diplopia or double vision looking at near objects is a third nerve palsy, medial rectus involvement. Diplopia or double vision looking at far off objects is lateral rectus palsy because of sixth nerve involvement. Right. This is about horizontal diplopia. Vertical diplopia that is double vision one image being above or below the other image. The vertical diplopia tends to occur from disorders of the oblique muscles less often of the vertically acting recti. So usually the vertical diplopia results from oblique muscles either superior oblique or inferior oblique. Very rarely less often it is seen in superior rectus or inferior rectus palsy. So horizontal diplopia is because of the medial rectus and lateral rectus and vertical diplopia is because of either superior oblique or inferior oblique involvement. So diplopia at distance that is patients with sixth nerve palsy, lateral rectus palsy have difficulty in diverging the eyes and tend to have more diplopia at distance. Example driving. Diplopia at near patients with medial rectus weakness have difficulty converging with more diplopia at near example reading and less at a distance. Diplopia is worse with the gaze in the direction of the involved muscles. For example, if the lateral rectus gets affected, they will have diplopia more on looking to the lateral side. If they have medial rectus involvement, so they will have diplopia more in this direction. So the diplopia is worse with gaze in the direction of the involved muscle. The diplopia or double vision of myasthenia gravis varies greatly with time of day and fatigue. With passage of time, the double vision worsens because it's a neuromuscular junction disorder of skeletal muscle. So morning they may be alright, but as they keep using their eye muscles, they may develop double vision. So initially the person says the person has not got double vision, does not have double vision, but with passage of time, with the usage of muscles, if he gets double vision, then we should always suspect 
myasthenia gravis, neuromuscular junction of skeletal muscle because of fatigability of muscles. The one clue which can tell us that it could be myasthenia gravis is other than fatigability is sparing of the pupils. Because myasthenia gravis does not involve pupils because pupils are separated by smooth muscles whereas myasthenia gravis is neuromuscular junction disorder of skeletal muscle. So in myasthenia gravis pupils are spared a very important clinical point. The third and sixth nerve palsy affecting the medial rectus and lateral rectus can cause double vision and one of the common causes is ischemia. Ischemic cranial nerve palsy tends to resolve in two to three months. So person has got double vision, usually sixth nerve palsy. So they complain of double vision on looking towards one side. Sixth nerve palsy, uh, we do a lot of investigation. Sometimes MRI may pick up, sometimes MRI may not pick up. Usually we think it is because of ischemic cranial nerve palsy. We start on antiplatelets and usually they recover in two to three months. So ischemic cranial nerve palsy tends to resolve in two to three months. So it is very important and very satisfying that the person improve, uh, they, their symptoms improve, the double vision improves in just two to three months. Whereas progressive diplopia raises the possibility of a compressive lesion involving a cranial nerve palsy. For example, third cranial nerve palsy can get affected by posterior communicating artery aneurysm. So third cranial nerve supplies the medial rectus, so they'll have, they may have double vision, which is progressive in type. So compressive lesion of a cranial nerve produces a double vision which is progressive in nature whereas an ischemic third nerve palsy or sixth nerve palsy usually resolved in two to three months. Again a very important differentiating point. A double vision which improves in two to three months is an ischemic cranial nerve palsy. A double vision which is progressive is because of a compressive cranial nerve palsy. Very important clinical uh, points. Yeah, these are the important points. Uh, we note when we approach a person suffering from double vision or diplopia. Uh, the other important concepts of neurology, I put it in a book called Focus Neurology written by me. It is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if interested, it could be bought online. If you have liked this video, please like, share this link, but do subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinvas Medical Concepts and my web page, Dr. Sinvas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.